Hi, how's everybody today? Today's lecture is on Keynesian economics. There's a little bit in the textbook on this, but not a lot. And there are lots of other types of economic theories abounding, swirling all around us as we speak. But I thought I would go back today and try to make a very simplistic explanation of Keynesian economics. And so if you get, kind of get a, a, your mind wrapped around this concept, then I think it might be easier for you to get your mind wrapped around other concepts, supply side economics, Phillips curve, uh, trickle down theories, and some of, some of the other theories that are swirling around us today. This economy, uh, this idea came about uh, to the United States in the 1930s. But first, let me talk about uh, the U.S. Constitution and economics. There's nothing at all in the U.S. Constitution dealing with economics. It doesn't say the United States will have a capitalistic system. It doesn't say anything about economics. But early on, the Americans decided that they sort of liked the idea of capitalism. And um, having a private sector, having a supply and demand economy. And so uh, in capitalism, we, we practiced for a long time something called laissez-faire uh, capitalism, which was government keep your hands completely off the economy. So the, the government was over here operating, and the economy was over here operating. Now in capitalism, it's run by something called supply and demand. When you have demand, it moves up like this. Prices move up. If uh, everybody wants one, and you know there's always something every Christmas, you know, where all the children want a certain toy, and you can't always find those toys, and they become very scarce, and then parents go crazy and pay huge amounts of money for their little darling's toys. That's supply and demand. The supply is limited, the demand goes up, and the price goes up. When prices rise and there's lots of demand and the economy begins to get hot, we, in, we see prices rising or inflation. So prices are going up. But there's something in laissez-faire capitalism, there's some place, there's some level where you stop buying that item. There's just certain something. Let's say you're going to have a, a dinner party and you're going to make a tossed salad and you go to the store and the lettuce costs $3.50 a head. Do you buy it? Some people would, but some people would say, no, I think I'll have a different type of salad. That's just too high. And when this mysterious uh, ceiling is reached and people quit buying because prices get too high, then demand is reduced and prices fall. If you've ever been to the store and you see uh, the second day on lettuce and they say, okay, it's 25 cents a head because we've got to get rid of this lettuce before it goes bad, and you buy two heads and you say, oh, I'll have the, the salad tonight. So prices fall to a level, and there's a mysterious place here where you start buying again. Maybe that's 25 cents a head. You start buying, there's more demand, and prices start rising. So in laissez-faire capitalism, this is what happens. The market self-corrects. So you have demand, demand falls off, and uh, maybe supply is limited, supply re-figures uh, in this, demand goes up, and you have a curve that looks like that. So if you look at American history and you study history, you will see that we have periods of boom and periods of bust. When, you, when demand falls off, people get fired from their jobs. They lose their jobs. Demand picks up, people are rehired. All right, but 1929 occurred, and instead of a self-correction in this, we went down into a huge trough called a depression. A recession would be sort of when you're down in the dumps and then you come back up. But a depression is when we really went down and nobody had ever seen anything like this before. Franklin Roosevelt ran for president in 1932, and he said this when he was campaigning. We are in a terrible situation, and I don't know what to do. Nobody knows what to do because we've never had this before. But this is what I promise you. If you vote for me and I'm elected, I promise you I will do something. And if that doesn't work, I'll stop doing that and I'll do something else till we find the solution. Well, people voted for him. He read a book by an English economist 
named John Maynard Keynes, and the book was published in 1936. And in that idea, uh, in the book, came this wonderful idea of Keynesian economics. And this was the idea. Here it is, and I boiled it down to the, to the essence, I think. It's much more than this, but here's a little bit of the essence. It's this. He called not just for a capitalistic economy, but for a mixed economy, meaning that you certainly have a private sector that takes the lead, but government also has a very important role to play in managing the economy. And here it is. If your economy is going up and down like this, and you get down in a trough like this, and the private sector either cannot or will not spend and increase demand so that employment improves and wages improve, then government should step in, said Keynes, and do the taxing and spending in two ways. He said there's something called fiscal policy, and that's taxing and spending. This would be the Congress and the President. The other thing is called monetary policy, and this is the availability of credit. What does this is the Federal Reserve System that we have, and this is making credit available. Now, let's, let me show you how this works. Let's say that your economy is moving up like this, and it's getting too hot. It's getting too inflationary. There's too much demand. Prices are rising. Sometimes this is very dangerous for an economy. You don't want this to happen too much. So what can you do, what can government do to manage the economy in terms of fiscal policy? Taxing and spending. You want to dampen down your economy. So what you might do is you might raise taxes. All right? This means the money that I would spend on the toy of the year, I have to give to the tax man. I don't have it. I don't spend it and it reduces demand. This is what we want. Spending. Should the government spend when the, tax, when the economy is too hot? No. Don't spend now. Don't let contracts. Okay? Now, what about monetary policy? Availability of credit. What can you do if you want to dampen down a too hot economy? Well, the Federal Reserve has several, four or five different tools in its tool bag to work on this, but I've listed two here for you. One is called the reserve requirements. This means you want to get a loan, availability of credit. You want to get a loan. You go to the bank and the bank says, okay, for every dollar I loan you, I've got to keep a dollar or two dollars or fifty cents or whatever in the bank in case there's a run on the bank. So to discourage you from getting the loan, what they can do is raise the reserve requirements. We have to keep more money in the bank. I have less money to loan. Maybe you don't get that loan. The second one I've listed here is the discount rate. How much does the Federal Reserve charge banks that borrow from it in interest? If they want to dampen down the economy, they can raise the discount rate, meaning banks have to pay more, meaning you have to pay more to borrow money. You see? And the discount rate affects the prime rate that banks uh, charge their best customers, which affects the effective rate which you and I can get when we get a loan. Now, let's say you want to stimulate the economy. The economy is down in the dumps right here. What can you do? Lower taxes, more money, and increase spending, stimulating. Over here, what can you do? You can reduce the reserve requirements, more money to lend, and you can lower the discount rate, which will lower the prime rate, which will lower the effective rate, and we don't have to spend so much for money we borrow. So that's a little bit about Keynesian economics. Read the chapter carefully and think about this a little while. I think you'll find it quite interesting. Thanks.